Hello everyone, welcome. Today's gonna to be a fun, little, relaxed, uh, spicy video. I'm gonna be sharing with you my unfiltered opinions on fragrances, on the fragrance industry, on perfumes, on my likes and dislikes. This is rather an unpopular opinions video. So sit back, get yourself a little snack. We are going to be here and we're gonna be yapping about fragrance opinions. I am excited to hear your thoughts on some of these opinions because I think some of these might be more popular than others, so I'm excited to hear what you have to say in the comments as well. If you're new here, hello, my name is Anya. I absolutely love perfumes. When it comes to perfumes, I try to be very careful about what I add into my collection, so I always talk about consciously consuming fragrances and being really careful about what you spend your money on. I have a fragrance expense tracker linked down below my videos to serve that purpose for you. So you can check it out if you wanna learn more about that. But I also post videos on this channel five days a week and I post additional content on Instagram and TikTok under the username Anishka Fragrances. So without further ado, let's get into this video. I will say this right now, I plan on doing more videos related to this, just chit chatty videos. Um, I'm keeping it to five main opinions for this specific video today uh, because I don't want to be here forever. But rest assured, there will be more parts to this series because I have a lot of thoughts. I've been here, I've had this YouTube channel for now, it's been like way over a year. I've had my thoughts and opinions. So let's get started and talk about the first point that I have here in my notes. And the first thing is, Quality sometimes comes with a higher price tag, and let me explain what I mean by this. So there are fragrances in my collection that are $20. There are perfumes that I love that are $5 perfume oils that I got from Amazon. There are fragrances that are several hundred dollars that I saved up, I bought for a special occasion, um, and I'm really happy to have. I have noticed as I've started developing a more niche nose, that at some point when you pay for quality, quality does come. Um, there are other fragrances that are really expensive that I wouldn't pay money for, um, and I don't think they're worth buying. Um, I've tried them, I'm not gonna get them. And however, I do think at some point, getting niche perfumes, you can kind of smell the difference. And I. I really am quite particular about the niche fragrances I recommend and I'm really happy to have relationships or be fostering relationships with quality niche brands. I started off doing perfume videos because I was so passionate about fragrances but I didn't necessarily have the budget to have niche collections or to have a niche collection. So I started off with that in mind so that's why i started talking about affordable perfumes about middle eastern fragrances the cheaper the more affordable ones because there are a lot of really high-end niche perfumes in the middle eastern space as well um but i did find as i started getting into niche that certain ingredients certain notes smell different if they're blended in a certain way, if you're using high quality ingredients, the perfume will smell a bit more refined. Uh, that doesn't go for everything, but I've noticed the more I smell, you can kind of tell if a perfume is more expensive versus if not. Some similar scent profiles might smell more refined in a certain um, price point, and some may not smell as refined. But at the same time, there are perfume videos on my channel that you can easily find that include affordable fragrances that smell niche, and I mean that. But there are other perfumes that are hundreds of dollars that do not smell niche, and I might talk about some of those in upcoming videos, but yeah, that's my opinion on that. I do think you're paying for quality at some point. The next thing is, I might ruffle a few feathers with this, gatekeeping is ridiculous. I think gatekeeping is ultimately ridiculous because, and I say this as someone with like dozens, about like a hundred perfumes currently. I have like a, a, around a hundred perfumes. I have many more samples and decants. I, I smell a lot of perfumes and I think gatekeeping is ultimately ridiculous. I kind of see it as someone buying like the same outfit as you. Um, if you're wearing something and someone else wears that same same thing and you can kind of see it yes it can be a little bit irritating but are you going to gatekeep where you got a certain outfit just because you want to be like super unique 
no, why would you do that with fragrance? And you might do that, and if you do that, it's totally fine. But I kind of always see it as if you are getting a compliment from someone and they want to kind of like emulate what you're wearing, isn't that like the most sincerest form of flattery, right? And we all have like these like different nuances to ourselves, right? So like if I'm wearing a certain fragrance and I'm dressed a certain way and I have like a vibe that's a certain certain way and someone comes up to me and they're like, what fragrance are you wearing? Or like they say, oh, this smells so good, what are you, what are you wearing? And I tell them, Unless they're copying my vibe, copying my outfit, copying my fragrance, copying my makeup, I don't think it's weird if they're wearing that same perfume because I am going to layer it differently. I'm going to wear it in a different way. I'm probably not going to wear it 365 days of the year. Like, I don't need to gatekeep something. Like, I don't need to gatekeep something just to be unique. Like, I'm, I'm more than the things I put on my body. Like, come on. Like, I don't need to, I don't need to be that. I don't need to be that petty. Like I, I do believe in sharing fragrances with people because here's the other thing, and this goes back to what I was talking about earlier about one of the reasons why I got into content creation. A lot of people are unaware that certain brands exist because if you walk into Sephora or Ulta, even the sales associates are under the impression that the only fragrances that are available to people are the ones that are at least $100. I used to work in retail and I literally like, had a manager basically say like, yeah, fragrances are expensive. Like, I mean, he didn't say that verbatim, but that's kind of what, what he was saying. And I'm taking his words out of context here. But I mean, yes, he said fragrances are expensive, but fragrances are fragrances don't have to be expensive. So if I have a really like affordably priced perfume that I sourced online and someone compliments me what I'm wearing like when I'm wearing it, of course I want to share because I want to be like I want you to be able to have that um experience of having a perfume that's actually not an arm and a leg and enjoying it and having other people compliment you. Like isn't that amazing? Like can't we like you know share that? I feel very strongly about this, clearly. Like I do think hey, we're trying to empower other people. So let's let's share the experiences, let's share the love. So the next opinion that I have is discovery sets can get overpriced. Some brands are terrific when it comes to coming out with fairly priced discovery sets. They even uh, give you a voucher that you can put towards a full bottle. I think that's fantastic. There are some other brands that come out with a discovery set. They have four little teeny tiny samples and they're pricing it at like $50. There's another brand that I'm not going to mention. Um, they have like their discovery sets. I think they give you like 10, fra 10 fragrances and it's like a hundred dollars. Like nine or 10 fragrances for a hundred dollars. It's two milliliters, like little teeny tiny. And I'm like, that's a little bit insane. Like that's too much. Um, I don't know if I would want to spend that on just discovering your brand without a voucher. Like at least get a voucher. I think all brands should at least give voucher for give vouchers for the discovery sets because if I really wanted to, I could technically probably get a sample of your fragrance if I go to the counter and I ask a salesperson nicely. If they don't want to give me a sample, it's totally fine, but I, I feel like there is like a there is an envelope that people are there's like a there's a line that people are pushing when it comes to these pricings. Uh, some brands that do it really well, they do discovery sets fantastic. Um, I would say Experimental Perfume Club. I recently got one of their discovery sets. I love it. Um, I think they do a great job. It's a great experience. Um, Unwin Namad, I have always talked about their discovery set. Their discovery set is fantastic. The experience that you get is wonderful. It's an experience and you also get a voucher. So part of me almost kind of feels like I don't want to try certain brands out specifically because I'm kind of looking at their discovery set. I'm like, that it costs that much for samples because when you look at the price per milliliter like it just doesn't align it doesn't align it doesn't make any sense the next thing is you don't need a full bottle to review a perfume and i'm really happy to have an kind the kind of audience that is okay with me reviewing decants and talking to you about that and i'm glad that you take my opinion seriously even if i don't have the full bottle but i think there is like this huge pressure on social media on content creators and in the creator community with other content creators 
that if you don't have a large collection or if you're not buying a release, then you're just not taken seriously as a creator. And I think that has to stop because at the end of the day, I don't want to have like a full wall of mediocre fragrances that I don't resonate with. Like I'm much more comfortable with reviewing a fragrance for you in decant form because at the end of the day, if I'm reviewing a fragrance for you in a decant form, I'm just reviewing the juice. I'm not reviewing the bottle. I'm not saying, oh, this is the color of the bottle or, oh, this is what it looks like. This is the packaging. This is this. This is that. This is the experience, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm reviewing the fragrance itself. And that's why I like reviewing decants because I can give you an unbiased opinion on the decants. I'm not going to sit here and say, wow, the bottle is amazing. No, I'm going to tell you that the fragrance juice is mediocre or it's amazing. Either way, or it's terrible, we're not sure. But that's why I like reviewing with decants. That's just my opinion. I do think that having the decants actually helps me give you like a more unbiased review. But I think by and large, just because someone has the bottle doesn't necessarily mean the review is more significant than someone who doesn't and vice versa. But I think we're kind of going in the right direction because I've seen some mid-level creators that I watch at least uh, start reviewing samples and decants and I think that's fantastic. I really do think that's amazing and I want to see more of that. Um, the next thing since we're talking about bottles is bottles matter and that sounds so weird out of context but if you're new to this channel you might not know this but I actually do a uh, weekly series here uh, on perfume news. So every week I sit in front of you we talk about the news releases. I do comment a lot on the bottles and kind of like the running theme in some of those videos is um, if a bottle looks ugly, I will say it. <laughs> if a bottle looks ugly, I will say it because at the same time, at, at the end of the day, if you're paying money for a fragrance, you're paying for the whole thing. You're paying for the juice, you're paying for the bottle, you're paying for the experience. And I don't want my experience to be impacted by a bottle that looks ugly. Like there's some ugly bottles out there. Should I do a video on the ugliest bottles? That might be fun and a little bit petty. I don't know. Let me know if you want to see that. Um, but I feel like if you're paying for the experience, you should have the joy of using a fragrance. If the bottle looks bad, I'm not going to use their fragrance. Like there are so many, like, I think there are definitely some perfumes that have outright decluttered because I just couldn't stand the bottle because I never used it. I never used the fragrance because I didn't like the bottle. Maybe if a perfume is like $10 and under and it's like a teeny tiny bottle, like I don't care what the bottle looks like at that point. But if it's like a big bottle and like it looks ugly, I don't know if I want to use it. Like, um, I don't want to put them on blast here, but the Yara, the Yara bottles from Latafa, I don't think they look cute. They don't look cute. They're like kind of like mini, like they, they're fun to hold, but I have Yara 2s over there. I don't, I'm not a fan of it. Um, I'm not a fan of the way the bottle looks. And I like some of the other Yara fragrances. I've had them in decant form, but I don't know if I would like be jumping at the bit to like get the, to get the bottles because of the way they look and I'm not too happy with that. But yeah, those were all my opinions for now because I will be doing more videos probably talking about my unpopular fragrance opinions because as you can tell, I have a few. I, I could probably spout 20 at you right now, but um, that would be way too long of a video, number one. And number two, it's getting dark in here. Uh, so yeah, let me know. What do you think of my unpopular opinions? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And for the record, if you disagree with me, just... I'm happy to sh I'm happy to read your opinion. I'm happy to respond, um, so long as you do it respectfully. Like I love when we have discussions in the comments. We don't all have to agree on our opinions about fragrances. Um, I just love talking with you. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it entertaining. And I'll see you next time. Bye.